Hi guys, and welcome back to King's Reptile Room. It's Safi, and today we're going to do a species profile on bull pythons like our Monty. And we really hope you find this informative and helpful, and let's get in. Um, so these snakes are thought to be named royal pythons because many African rulers were believed to have worn live pythons as jewellery. Um, and Cleopatra was one in particular that they um, say wore these bull pythons as jewellery. Um, whereas the term bull python refers to how they, they like to curl themselves up into a ball with their heads and their necks hidden in the centre as a mean of, sort of defence when they feel stressed or threatened. So they like to protect themselves in that way. Uh, these snakes are non-venomous constrictors meaning that they will curl, coil their bodies around their prey and turn their, tighten their bodies to crush them before they eat them. In the wild, bull pythons mainly consume small mammals, such as shrews, rats, gerbils, striped mice and birds. Young pythons and males will mainly feast upon small birds, like um, nestlings and, or young birds whilst larger pythons and females tend to prefer small mammals. Most captive bred bull pythons will consume rats and mice, and sometimes chicks. Um, frozen and then thawed rats and mice are usually what are fed to these pythons, and are moved around with a pair of feeding tongs, um, which animates them enough for the snake's predator instincts to kick in. Uh, in the UK, we're not allowed to feed live, live feeders, although I know many other countries do allow this, um, the risk of using live feeders is that if the snake doesn't want to eat it straight away or decides it's not hungry, um, the feeders can bite the snake and the, the bites can become infected and ultimately lead to a lot of harm to the snakes. So I would say throws and forward is better myself. The maximum length that an adult bull python can reach is six foot long although the adult length is usually between three to six foot. Uh, females are usually larger and mature at around four to four and a half feet long, and males typically grow to around three to three and a half feet long. Bull pythons are once commonly thought to thrive in small, cramped, dark trays and tanks, and that large environments stress them out. This is simply not true. Living conditions like this can result in obese snakes, and robs them of mental stimulation and enrichment. They need the opposite to thrive. Juvenile bull pythons under three feet can be housed in enclosures that are 36 by 18 by 18 inches or larger, whereas adult pythons over three feet long need an enclosure size of 120 by 60 by 60 centimetres minimum, at least eight square feet of floor area and at least two feet in height for climbing space, preferably more for males who climb a lot more than females in the wild, is ideal, although you can go larger. Larger is always better. Their enclosures should be at least as long as the snake is when it's stretched out fully. Front opening enclosures are more difficult for snakes to escape from and are easier for you to gain access to your snake, as lifting them from top opening tanks can startle them. Um, if you have a glass tank with a mesh lid, make sure it locks into place as bull pythons are known escape artists and they will escape. Arnold accidentally left our um, the viv open just a tiny bit. We thought we'd closed it and he did get out, but we found him almost straight away. But he did get out, so they, they, they will escape when you think they can't. <laughs> um, heat mats are commonly used as a heat source for bull pythons, usually placed beneath the enclosure on one side covering about a third of the floor space. It's thought that the use of heat mats comes from when they were commonly housed in trays or small enclosures where other heat sources could not effectively be used. However, in a large enclosure with a good substrate layer, heat mats just don't create enough ambient temperature. Um, the snakes will have an overall colder enclosure and will be forced to burrow down into the substrate to keep warm. Um, Heat mats that are not attached to thermostats frequently overheat and cause severe burns on the undersides of the snake. Even when attached to thermostats, they are known to frequently malfunction, resulting in more burns. 
um, heat rocks are commonly sold and uh, they have no mean there's no means of monitoring the temperature on them they can't go on a thermostat that I know anyway um, and they will also result in severe burning um, the snake the rocks only heat themselves the surface of the rock not any of the air temperature around them so the snake will be will likely wrap itself around the rock to warm up um, and then it, and then obviously you just end up with more burning all the way around the underside of the poor snake because he's just wrapping around to try and keep warm. Um, if you do happen to get any burns on any of your snakes, then make sure you get them to an exotic vet Im as immediately as soon as you can because it can cause severe health issues for the snake. Um, in the wild, bull pythons get their heat from the sun up above in the sky and they will burrow down into their substrate into the into the ground to keep to cool down from the sun to get away from it because obviously the ground is cooler um so obviously you it makes sense to replicate that in captivity so otherwise you'll force them to do the opposite if you have a heat mat and they have to burrow down into the soil to, to warm up and everything you're not letting them display natural behavior um so you can get a overhead heat source basking bulbs um with a cage around the outside of it to um prevent obviously the snake getting in direct content with the heat lamp and the fixtures because obviously that could cause bones burns as well otherwise and this will replicate them getting their heat from the sun and they can dig down into their substrate layers to cool themselves just like they would out in the wild where they are in africa um bull pythons are cold blooded and do not produce their own body heat so an external heat source is non-negotiable they need it to help them maintain their metabolism um, the ideal basking spot temperature is 35 degrees centigrade and can be measured with a thermal heat gun that we have um, and the air on the warm side of the enclosure should be 30 to 32 degrees and on the cold side between 22 and 27 degrees at night the temperature range in the enclosure should be 21 to 26 degrees if your temperature drops below 21 degrees at night then a ceramic heat bulb should be placed inside the basking lamp as that emits heat but no light um, the humidity in their enclosures should be 60 to 80 percent during the day and raise to 80 to 100 percent during the night which is how it is in their natural environment in Africa. Um, to keep the humidity high, a nice deep substrate layer of at least four inches will help lock in a lot of moisture so that they can, um, that can then gradually release in, as humidity into the air. Um, and you can also mist the enclosure daily. Um, a humid hide is also a great idea and will help when they need to shed. It's really good aid when they're shedding. So a nice hide and you just stuff some nice moist sphagnum moss in there and they'll be able to go in there with that and that obviously helps get them all nice and damp and everything for shedding and stuff too. If the heat and all the humidity is not correct then your snake could stop eating. Um, a lack of humidity can also impede shedding resulting in a higher likelihood of retained or stuck shed on your python which can be really painful and it can also cause dehydration. A popular DIY substrate for bull pythons is a mixture of 40% organic topsoil, so no fertilizers or anything in it because that can up, that can upset your snake. 40% reptisoil and a 20% sand, um, and a lot of people um, do make this mix up and have say it's really good for their snakes. Um, however, reptile carpet is just a breeding ground for bacteria and notoriously hard to keep clean it's really not a good idea and also you're going to struggle to get the right amount of humidity if you just have a little piece of reptile carpet in the bottom of your enclosure um aspen shavings or tip chippings uh mold very quickly when they are kept in a moist environment and obviously you can have to try and keep them moist to keep your humidity up but they don't really absorb much uh, it takes a lot to get them to absorb all as well um, cedar or pine shavings also release oils 
that may cause neurological damage in reptiles so it's a good idea to steer clear of those as well. We use an Arcadia Earth Mix as our substrate because it's bioactive and we also keep isopods and springtails in there with Monty and I'll link the video in the description as we filmed that on our other channel um, that how we set that all up and got that running um, and we also do grow grass in it as well which he seems to like slithering through to um, just from grass seed and stuff we grow ourselves so we know that there's nothing nasty in with the grass seed or anything um, so that's also a good idea and then obviously the ice pods and that are the cleanup crew and they'll go through and help clean up after him and everything the average lifespan of captive bull pythons is 20 years whereas wild bull pythons average at a, out at a 10 year lifespan so obviously if you're thinking of getting a bull python you got to make sure you can make that lifelong commitment for them um, the longest known age of a captive bull python with official birth records was 47 years old and lived at a zoo in Philadelphia in America. And there's also one in St. Louis that was is estimated to be 63 years old. And in 2021, laid a clutch of eggs, um, despite not being with male for 15 years. So they're trying to decide whether she managed to store the sperm for that long when she last met with a male or accidentally came in contact with another male. But they can also lay infertile eggs and clone themselves as well in very rare cases. So we don't know what's happening there. Bull pythons are solitary animals and should be housed separately. They do not get lonely and housing more than one together will cause stress and make them feel threatened, resulting in one or both of them getting sick and or stopping to eat eating. And there's also been some cases of bull python cannibalism, so don't even go there. Just get one and enjoy your one. And if you want multiple, then you have multiple enclosures. It's that simple. Um, because bull pythons are nocturnal and they come out predominantly at night, UVB tubes are often viewed as a waste of money. However, they're ideal for helping to establish a good day-night routine and should be on a 12-hour on, 12-hour off cycle. Um, some studies with bull pythons have also shown that UVB result in better physical and mental health for your python as well. Um, if you do get a UVB tube light, then you must be prepared to change it every 12 months because it, although it can get, still give out light, the amount of UVB it will give out will have to have deteriorated. So it might give out light, but that light won't have any UVB in it, so you need to replace it yearly. Um, some people even say it's a smaller time, length of time is six months. So you've just got to be prepared to regularly change that lighting. And that also gives them vitamin D3 as well. And, and it's just really beneficial overall for your snakes. So it's a good idea to get. And I also have a couple of what I found quite interesting facts about bull pythons. Um, they are revered by the Igbo people in Nigeria. They believe the bull pythons represent the earth as they travel so close along the ground. And if one is found in a village, it will either be left to roam or very carefully moved to a field or forest. And if one is killed accidentally, they will build a coffin for it and give it a small funeral. And folklore in northwest Ghana tells of how a bull python once saved them from their enemies by transforming into a log to cross a river. And they are not allowed to be eaten or hurt. There's a big taboo about that. They can't eat or hurt bull python because they want to save them. So they're viewed very highly in their, those countries. So I just thought that was quite quite cool little tidbit of information there. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it informative. And please make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our videos. So thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you in the next video.